so this video has taken way too long <laughs> for me to make and finish and that's why I've got it also in two parts because the robe took me plenty of time and the nightgown is still unfinished <laughs> so the nightgown just has been fun for various reasons I'm not really sure why actually it's really just because I started this project and the nightgown project right the beginning of December so and like end of November so holidays have been busy and all that now that it's January I've had time to finish them I mean this this guy I've had finished for a little bit and let me just say I love it <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more at the end about this pattern and the fabrics and all that stuff but for today enjoy this witchy cottage core gothic frilly Laura Ashley robe sewing pattern vlog. No. Vlog? Sewing pattern? I need to stop putting pattern in there. Why is pattern in there? Enjoy my process of me making this very cute gothic Victorian flannel night robe. Okay, so here I have my pattern. I'll show a better picture in detail, but basically I'm going to be making the robe from this pattern and I'm ignoring the nightgown because unfortunately I somehow don't have the nightgown pieces in here. Sometimes that's just what happens with hand-me-down patterns, but you know, oh well. So what I'm going to do for the nightgown actually is I'm going to take a different like 90s or 80s uh, blouse pattern and I'm going to modify that, probably like the mixture between this and this with the ruffles to make a nightgown. So I'll just be like elongating the length of the shirt to be like nightgown length while adding some flair to it. So we'll do that later. Right now, we're gonna do the easy part, which is the robe. Also, uh, <laughs> Laura Ashley, yes please. Also, of course, this is all pre-washed. This is a really cute uh, what do you call this? A flannel? This is a cute flannel I got from Joann's this year. I'm in love with it. I think I need to buy more. We'll see. After pre-washing all of my flannel and other fabrics I used, I started by pinning the pattern pieces and then cutting them out. I actually ended up having to buy more fabric to do the robe facing, um, but I'm not really complaining because I love this fabric and I know I'll have some other uses for my scraps. Okay, so I'm still cutting stuff out, but for right now I couldn't decide because there's, um, there's a ruffle around the neckline and there's a ruffle on the pockets, the top of the pockets. And I can't decide if I want to use this that I have, I think, just enough to do the collar or the lapel on the neckline in the pockets and potentially the sleeves. Um, I think I think there's plenty of that, enough for it. I know there's at least three yards, maybe a little bit more. Um, so I'm just gonna wait on cutting out the ruffle pieces to just test out how I feel about everything else. And then the other thing that I got to the point of is um, there's a little piece that's the belt carrier, it's like the belt loop. I thought this was gonna make me cut out a bunch, but it looks like there's only one and that's gonna go in the back of the garment, I'm guessing. So I'm more inclined to do it now. I was gonna skip it, but after looking at it, it looks like there's only one rather than like four or however many. So that's kind of where I'm at, just cutting out. I haven't cut out the sleeves yet either. So I'm going to cut out these pieces, the pockets. There's like an under collar. And let's see what else. Pocket facing. I'm going to cut those out. Cut the sleeve out. Sleeves out. I might modify the sleeves. There's, there's other pieces. I have, a whole, I have a whole thing over there of other pieces I need to cut out. So... I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to come back and see where we're at real soon. <laughs> so right now I'm about to cut out the sleeve. I have it all pinned, but um, I do actually kind of want a slight puffed sleeve. So I'm going to add like quite a curve up to the top. 
Um, I think maybe I'll draw that out in chalk and then cut out and then I will show you how much I added if that makes sense. <laughs> For the lace, I decided on this black eyelet that I had bought for a completely different project that I haven't completed yet, but I thought it was too perfect not to use for my robe, and I'm going to end up using it with my nightgown as well. After I cut out and prepared all my lace pieces, I started working on the pockets. They're kind of the standard patch pocket, except for the inserted lace embellishment that is gathered and sandwiched between the pocket and pocket facing. And then after finishing that, I top stitched the pocket facing, bra edge down, and then place it where the pattern indicated onto my robe fronts lining up a raw edge with the raw edge of the side seam, but sewing down the opposite edge and bottom edge of the pocket. It's kind of a strange construction. I've never really seen that before. So I'm basically encasing the, one of the sides of the pocket inside the side seam of the row. It's kind of strange. More lace gathering and then pinning and sewing this lace to the robe's collar edges. And now I can sandwich the robes facing and sew that down to encase the lace's raw edges inside and make a basically super long lapel. Okay, so I've just cut like this big chunk away from the shoulder and like partially the side of the robe. Um, it was way too big on me and like for reference I wear like usually a size large in tops and my boyfriend wears size double XL and the robe fit him perfectly. <laughs> and was like basically I'm wearing my parents clothing as a three-year-old size on me so um, I did some drastic cutting I kind of cut probably too much away and now like the, the side seam got this weird thing going on but it's a robe so whatever I guess I don't know <laughs> I might try to fix it we'll see um, but yeah, this is my general fix to fix the shoulder because the shoulder was ridiculous and it like made the arm side the arm side was this before so it was from all the way from down here to up here so <laughs> it was huge it was like basically down to my waist so yeah i mean i should have i should have known when i was cutting up like the large slash extra large pattern pieces that it might be humongous however that was the only side size that was included in my pattern so i didn't really have much options for that um, I could have, I guess, tried to make them smaller, but I'm not so good at that yet. <laughs> I'm still learning, so yeah, here we go. So I'm just going to finish doing the French seaming on the sides here, and then insert the sleeves again <laughs> and French seam everything. And then here I'm just gathering my large poofy sleeves before I set them in place. I did add that poof, as you saw earlier, to these sleeves just because I, like in Shirley Cuthbert, love poofy sleeves. I gave myself a very generous hem to help weigh down the robe and to avoid cutting and discarding more fabric than I really needed to.
The sleeves, however, are a completely different story. They were about eight inches too long, so I cut off four inches from each sleeve and gave myself a rolled hem that took up the extra four inches of excess. They still ended up a little long, but I can roll them up if they get in the way. They also came out a little wonky, but I mean, who's really looking at my sleeve hems? Remember that little belt loop I mentioned earlier? Turns out you actually cut one out and then turn it into a little spaghetti noodle that you cut in half and sew down uh, at both side seams. Well, at least that's what I did. I can't remember if this is what the instructions say to do because at this point I was just kind of full chaos sewing mode. final step was to make the waist tie. I had to piece mine together at the back seam of it where you're supposed to do it on a fold just because of the wonky scraps of fabric I had left and you know me trying not to waste too much of this precious precious flannel. So that added a little bit of an extra step but otherwise this was probably the easiest part of this whole pattern. Again, I really love how this robe ended up coming out. I mean, I did have to do this wonky uh, seam changes to the shoulders and part of the side seam just to make it fit me better. But if you saw this pattern in a thrift store and antique store, I would highly recommend grabbing it. It's such a cute pattern and like, who can deny it? Laura Ashley. <laughs> um, I've actually seen people try to sell the same pattern for like 40 bucks online. Which is kind of insane, but you know, what are you gonna do? Let's see if I can go over my conclusion before that candle spontaneously combusts and just, I don't know. <sighs> okay. 
know what? I'm gonna grab my my candle snuffer if I can find it. Sick. I knew I bought this thing for a reason. It's for snuffing candles. I'll snuff that candle in like a second. Okay. So all in all, really like this pattern. There were some things that were kind of wonky, like they wanted me to sew the sleeve into the sleeve head first, and then sew the arm, the sleeve seam, and the side seam of the robe all together. I don't particularly like doing those kinds of sleeves. Um, I think they're intended to be easier. I find doing a gathered sleeve and setting that into an arm tie a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, this is actually... I don't know if I've mentioned before, but this was Joanne's like Halloween flannel fabric and I love it. I'm currently really warm though. <laughs> I was cold earlier and now I'm like way too hot. Which is part of the reason why I wanted to make my own robe is because I've been <laughs> stealing my boyfriend's robe, which is like a thick fleece, like minky style robe, and it's just so warm. <laughs> and so this is supposed to be kind of like a all year round robe. But combined with the pants, I'm like <laughs> I'm baking alive here, but oh no, love this. This is actually lace I bought on Amazon. Um, if you really want, I can give you a link to this eyelet lace. I prefer not to, because like I don't really want to support Amazon, despite the fact that I still buy stuff from there. <sighs> anyway, I do want to add in some like poof supports into my sleeve heads. I'll do that when I decide to stop being lazy. It'll happen one day, <laughs> I'm sure. And um, I actually have a shirt that I cut out that matches all of this because I have a lot of excess fabric that I'm waiting to work on because, I don't know, I get excited and I cut things out and then I don't work on them. Nightgown is coming soon. I'm still working on it. <laughs> As I said, it's really down to like, I literally just have to do the lace on the bottom hem edge and I need to do the elastic inserts on the sleeves, sleeve wrist area, and then I'm pretty much done. So that'll be fun, that'll come soon, hopefully. <laughs> if, I, if I get motivated, it'll get done soon. <sighs> Other than that, I have another video that I'm working on that I hope I will get done before January ends. It's currently like the 16th, so we'll see. <laughs> and I hope to do at least one other video before February starts and my birthday is in February. And I actually am planning on making two dresses because again, I'm insane. Um, one's like a Valentine's dress though and it's very like vintage inspired and the other one is more of a cottagecore inspired dress. I'm sorry, the cat is doing something strange. <laughs> she was wiggling her little paw in the air. Lucy! Hmm. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any other ideas for like cute, witchy, Victorian gothic cottagecore sewing and or crafting videos that I could do, let me know down below. I'd be interested. If you liked what you saw, give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me out and it's free. <laughs> free money 99. <laughs> Um, it really does make me quite happy when people will subscribe and give me likes and stuff. It makes all the effort that I put into what I do so worth it. <sighs> but anyway, thank you so much again. Stay creepy, everyone. There we go. <laughs>